So Patrick Mahomes last night becomes the 11th player to win MVP of the season and win the Super Bowl in the same year. The last to do it was Kurt Warner in 1999. As you see, each of the previous nine MVP winners who made the Super Bowl that year had lost in the game. And so we were going to talk more about Patrick Mahomes here. But as I bring Rob Ninkovich into the conversation, and you're going to hear from a lot of our regulars here today, uh, Ninko, the, the discussion about the call that goes such a long way towards ending the game just sort of blew up here a moment ago. And I wanted to get your thoughts on it as one who played defense in the NFL for a really long time. What did you think of the holding penalty on James Bradbury last night in the final two minutes? I hated that call. I mean, I hated that call at that moment in the game because obviously it decided the game there for Kansas City. So you look at the, the game as a whole, that being the only holding call that they, have, they, they threw a flag on, you're telling me that the pass rushers, the offensive, defensive linemen, the guys that are trying to get to the quarterback weren't held? You could, you, you could basically break down every play and say, okay, there's holding here, there's holding there. But to call it in that instance, it's, it's a tough call. That's a tough flag to swallow considering, you know, basically it sets up Kansas City to run the clock out, no time left, kick the field goal, game over. So I just don't like it. I mean, as a linebacker, it's really, really hard to, to cover those snag routes. You, you get a little handsy, but the receiver also, they put their hands on the defender and they're trying to break free from you. So to grab a little bit. That, that's that's a tough one. And what I would really, what you really want to do as a as a linebacker and a d defensive back, if you have white sleeves on, you don't wear dark gloves, especially if you're going against a white jersey team. You wear white gloves. If you have your hand there and it's on a white jersey, they don't throw the flag. Oh, look at you can see his hands like a bullseye, like a target. Oh, look, my hand's right here on your back. Throw the flag. Oh. That's a remarkable little moment there. Oh. That's something that I don't think most people would ever have thought of, but I actually see Dominique nodding his Vintage head along. New England. As, as, yeah, there's the Patriots. Look, down to the final detail. So, so I think what Ninko was saying is the same thing that I'm saying, and I think Dan is saying a similar thing. I'm not arguing with you, Dominique, right. that it's not a good call. Mm -hmm. It's holding. I understand that it's holding. My question is, if that is just your run-of-the-mill holding, if that kind of thing happens multiple times during every game and they didn't seem to be calling it last night, so then I, I think why do you call it in that? RC spot? had the best explanation earlier in the game is to make it uh, similar to holding an offensive lineman. If you are holding, holding is not about actually grabbing jersey. It's about impacting the way someone can perform. Mm -hmm. And if you are separated, if there's separation, then they're, they're going to call it. And there was separation there. Bradbury's eyes were in the backfield, and he grabbed him, and he stopped him on that whip route. It wasn't intended to be a wheel. He turned it in a wheel because he couldn't get open when Patrick wanted to throw it to him. So uh, the, the only pushback I have against you guys saying that they shouldn't have called it is pointing at other times where they may have missed calls and saying, like, oh, well, if you miss this call then, you need to miss it all game. No, you want to get it right. And it sucks right there, but it's, it was the right call at the right time. Here's the thing. I, I, I'm not arguing with you. And this isn't even really an argument because we get it. We get that it's a call, and all of us can watch it and see that it is a good call. Sure. I think, Dan, one of the reasons it bothers us is that this was a classic this is a 35-35 Super Bowl between these two great quarterbacks. This had the, the this had the ability to be an unbelievable, like one of the most memorable Super Bowls ever, and instead it ends with this deflation. I was getting so excited to watch Jalen Hurts get the ball yeah. down three with 90 seconds to go. We kill. all were. The way that he was Me playing too. football. I mean, he was having, uh, like, one of the best quarterback performances I had seen. Can I just say this one thing? That's why I said it's okay to be disappointed without being angry. Right. No, like, Dom, can, I, I'm disappointed, too, but I'm not going to blame the ref for doing his job properly but and be mad at him. I, I'm with you. I, I think my, my, why I still believe it's an awful call, Dom, is this. One, we've talked about the, I think there's one or no holding calls up until this point throughout the whole game. So that's the most egregious hold of the, ga hold of the game, that one. That's my point, Dom. If they no. missed other calls is your point? But, but if they've, they've, they've gone 57-plus minutes and quote-unquote missed other calls hey guys. or allowed other calls to happen because it's a Super Bowl game, then that's, hey. th that's the most egregious one. If they set a tone for the way the game is going to be called is the point we're making. RC, final word on this, and then I'm going to other business. Go. Bro, when it happened, it was 35-35. What yeah. nobody back there holding. They yeah. should have been holding because folks was running <laughs> butt Booty, <laughs> naked, wide, open. So you yeah. know what? They probably didn't have to call holding throughout the game because they weren't. 
in the time <laughs> that he was getting beat, and he said, you know what? I probably shouldn't give up another pass, or I probably shouldn't let them score again. Let me hold this man. And that's why they called it. The game's not necessarily clean. And, and, and when you're talking about this call or this, or this play being egregious, no, he didn't pull him down. He didn't drag him down. He was able to finish on his route, but he did hold him, right? Devontae Smith wasn't held on that football down the sideline, right? A.J. Brown wasn't held. Travis Kelsey wasn't held all day. And you know what? All those people ate. This was a holding. This is a call that had to be made. And I am with Dom. I am disappointed too, Dan. I'm upset too. But we can't sit here and say, if you could tell me this, if you could go on that play, James Bradbury did not hold Juju Smith-Schuster, then I'll have this conversation for the rest of Get Up. But well, if you can't, can't tell that, me that. he said it. Yeah, right. You, we're, you, we're you can't tell me that. So let's talk about the fact that they couldn't, that, that the offensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs absolutely played out of their mind. That Patrick right. Mahomes on a bum ankle ran for 26 yards to get a first down. Let's talk about the fact that uh, Bolton played out of his freaking mind, forced right. a fumble on the tackle, scooped it, and scored. That's the game. The game was over at this point because of those plays, and the holding allowed them to run it out. That's fair. So, so let's leave it there for the moment. There's nothing on, on God's green earth we want to do less than talk about one call in one game in a game that was otherwise so incredibly dramatic. So, so Ninko, uh, if anyone here knows dynasties, it's you. You were a part of that, the, the machine there in New England and winning the championships and all the rest of that. The Kansas City Chiefs, from the moment Patrick Mahomes became their starting quarterback, they've been in five conference championship games, three Super Bowls. They've won two of them. He remains young. They will remain a favorite going forward. So this has led to a good deal of disagreement on our show today. We've been bringing in uh, RC, of course, is with us all morning long from Arizona. And Chris Canty gets up with us earlier this morning. We've had Bart Scott here. We've had Rob Ninkovich here. CC, we've not, had, not yet heard from you. It's an enormous call in an enormous spot in the game. What did you think of it? I hated the call, Grady, but it was the right call by the officials. And listen, no sports fan wants the game to be decided by a penalty by the officials. We didn't come to watch the Zebras. We came to watch the players. And since the officials have been letting it go, letting guys play all night long, you were surprised that they threw the laundry on that particular play. But this play is not all that dissimilar from what we saw in the AFC Championship game where an unnecessary roughness call on Joseph Asai ultimately decided the outcome and the Kansas City Chiefs kicked the field goal for the win. This is the same type of situation, and if I'm not going to criticize the refs in that scenario, I'm not going to be hypocritical and criticize them in the Super Bowl. Okay, fair enough. So, so, R.C., again, for those who are just joining us, uh, you played in the defensive secondary for years, and your position is it was, the good, it was a good call. It was a no-doubt yeah. call. Yeah, it was, it was the right call. And listen, unlike Bobby Orr, in no way did James Bradbury <laughs> revolutionize playing defense in this moment, right? You think about that play and, and, and where you are in that space, it's so difficult for James Bradbury because he's anticipating he's going to get a crosser. So he's trying to beat Juju across the field. And your natural instinct in that moment is not that there are less than two minutes left. It's that I would do this or I would hold him in, on this play, in this position, every single time. And so now if you're the official, you're also working from that vantage point as well. You're working from the vantage point of these are my two guys to watch and in watching him, this is a hold. Not only did he hold him the first time on the whip, which maybe you could have let go because it was so close to the line of scrimmage, he holds him again when he adjusts the route to get upfield. And so when you think about this, I get why you would be disappointed or why Gilly the Kid and Wallow are upset because now they can't go on their show and absolutely <laughs> cut the fool because the Philadelphia Eagles lost. But they lost because they didn't make enough plays. They lost because they put themselves in that position. And James Bradbury in anticipating something got something else and the official made the right call and we could talk till we're blue in the face well, about the calls they let go all day that doesn't mean you get to let that one go it's like you know what I've been robbing and stealing from people my whole life now I can't change let me rob and steal forever even though I've been saved that ain't how it works at some point I mean, you got to do the right thing and it's the right thing
Yeah, RC <laughs> just gave y'all a million dollar worth of game right there on that whole rundown about what when they're gonna call uh, knows that. The, when they're gonna, oh yeah, that was for you. When they're gonna call holding and when they're not gonna call holding. I don't know if you got that or not, Dan, but it doesn't matter. The I point got is, it. in that in I'm that part situation of Wednesday. <laughs> in that situation, <laughs> they were doing those whip routes and they were killing the Eagles. Yes. And they were scoring touchdowns on him. And their answer to that was to put him in press. When you're in press right like that, you don't have much room to work with. Right. He, once he puts his eyes in the backfield, he's dead because he's assuming that he's yeah. cutting off the route. So, I mean, and especially when the DB himself says he did it, it's John, hard for us to make yeah. an argument that they shouldn't make you it. You know out. what's fascinating to me, Dan, before I give it to you, and Ninko made this point, I wanted to make it while we were seeing that part of the video. He said that he genuinely believes one of the reasons the call is made is that Bradbury is wearing white sleeves yeah. and he's playing against a player wearing a white jersey and he's wearing dark gloves. And he actually said he should be wearing white gloves and that it is less noticeable. You see, you notice that that Leave it to players... the Patriots to learn how to cheat better. Whoa! <laughs> I mean, it is interesting that even down to that little kind of detail. All right. Here's the reason I don't like... I enjoyed RC's analogy, but I don't agree with it. Because... To me, the officials in all sports set a tone throughout a game. This is what we're going to call tonight. We're, we're going to let this kind of stuff go, and we're going to make this kind of call here. It's not about whether we've been robbing and stealing all right. of our lives. It's about tonight we're not calling this stuff. Like, yeah. we're letting it go, and then yeah. in that... You wanted the to be the purge, time, huh? You just want to purge? It was the only time they <laughs> called that all night long. <laughs> all right, so after, you know, being on for an hour now, I think two things come to mind. One, there is real disappointment on my end. Yeah. And, and that's fair? It's, that, that's not fair. Excuse me. Like, I sit here and I think... It's the morning after the Super Bowl, and all I really want to do is talk about Jalen Hurts' incredible performance and yeah. see how that game ended if he got the ball back down. Or, like, we got to sit in how great Patrick Mahomes is. We're not sitting in that enough, on and off the field. And I think the second part is this, and I'll, I'll speak directly to RC and, and, and Dom and Chris on this one. I'm hearing you guys say that, like, obvious holdings happen on that play. Two obvious moments, right? I can't get over the fact that there is no reaction by Juju Smith-Schuster. I was in the stadiums, as was RC, and I watched the sideline. There's no reaction. Great plays being made on both sides. In the end, the game is largely decided by a call, and we have spent a lot of time this morning debating whether it was, not whether it's a good call or a bad call. Because those of us who didn't want to see it be made, like Dan and I, I don't think either of us are arguing, well, there's no way this is holding. Neither of us are saying that. The question, Bart, and I know you were very strongly on the other mm -hmm. side, is if you haven't called holding all night long, if we can assume that there is holding regularly in the NFL, they were just choosing not to call it all night. Yeah. For them to make this call in that spot, when it does absolutely decide the outcome, that's the frustration. Yeah, but the thing is, this one happened on the island, right? And you're, you're asking a referee not to do their job and to consider the moment. And, you know, because it's, you know, on an island, it's not inside, it's not a slant where it's a lot of things that can distort your vision. You know, it's on the edge where it's right there in plain sight where that referee has one job to watch those two players and you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. And it's unfortunate that it happened this way. And I know we want the storybook ending. We want to go down and see if Jalen Hurts would be heroic. But sometimes it, it doesn't happen like this. This is reality. This isn't scripted, like the, uh, Foster said. The most interesting thing about that play to me is the Chiefs were majoring in that. That was how they scored most of their t both of their touchdowns. And they had been isolating different players the whole time. First is Slay. Then it's the nickel. Then they isolate Bradbury on it. And the way that the Eagles adjusted to it was to press and to be more physical. And I think they kind of were like, this is what's going to happen. We're going to take this particular play away, and they couldn't find a way to stop it all night. It sucks that it ends that way, but I think it, it doesn't feel like the Chiefs stole the Super Bowl or the refs blew it. I hope that it doesn't sound like that's what Dan and I are saying, because right. neither of us feel that. I, I, I don't want to speak for you. I don't feel like they stole it or none of that. Right. There was just something disappointing about a call. If it didn't have to be made then I would prefer that it not be made, considering that they hadn't thrown any flags the entire night, which candidly was a delight. I contrast it to the penalty in the Cincinnati AFC Championship game. Yeah. I was disappointed that that flag got thrown. Right. Not a single human being on planet Earth was going to dispute that that was a flag or not. Mm -hmm. This one, I sit there and I still, I remain adamant. I think it's a bad call. I think even after slowing it down, it's a bad call. That's not, is there a tug yet? There, there is no explanation after 57 plus minutes of the Super Bowl for that to be the one holding call that we think, yep, that's the one that stands out.
Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.